Hello friends, previously we have been discussing the fact that a current produces a magnetic field. That fact came as a surprise to the scientists who discovered the effect. Perhaps even more surprising was the discovery of the reverse effect. A magnetic field can produce an electric field that can drive a current. This link between a magnetic field and the electric field it produces is now called Faraday's law of induction. The observations by Michael Faraday and other scientists that led to this law were at first just basic science. Today, however, applications of that basic science are almost everywhere. For example, electric generators that power cities, huge induction furnaces that are commonplace in foundries. Before we actually get to the applications such as electric generators, we must examine two simple experiments about Faraday's law of induction. First experiment. Figure shows a conducting loop connected to a sensitive ammeter. Because there is no battery or other source of EMF included, there is no current in the circuit. However, if we move a bar magnet towards the loop, a current suddenly appears in the circuit. The current disappears when the magnet stops. If we then move the magnet away, a current again suddenly appears, but now in the opposite direction. If we experimented for a while, we would discover the following. A current appears only if there is relative motion between the loop and the magnet. One must move relative to the other. The current disappears when the relative motion between them ceases. Faster motion produces a greater current. If moving the magnet's north pole towards the loop causes, say, clockwise current, then moving the north pole away causes counterclockwise current. Moving the south pole towards or away from the loop also causes currents, but in the reversed direction. The current produced in the loop is called an induced current. The work done per unit charge to produce that current is called an induced EMF and the process of producing the current and EMF is called induction. Second experiment. For this experiment, we use the apparatus as shown with the two conducting loops close to each other but not touching. If we close switch S to turn on a current in the right hand loop, the meter suddenly and briefly registers a current, an induced current in the left hand loop. If we then open the switch, another sudden and brief induced current appears in the left hand loop but in the opposite direction. We get an induced current and thus an induced EMF only when the current in the right hand loop is changing either turning on or turning off and not when it is constant even if it is large. The induced EMF and induced current in these experiments are apparently caused when something changes. What is that something? We are going to discuss that something in next section. Faraday's Law of Induction Faraday realized that an EMF and a current can be induced in a loop as in two of the experiments by changing the amount of magnetic field passing through the loop. He further realized that the amount of magnetic field can be visualized in terms of the magnetic field lines passing through the loop. Faraday's law of induction stated in terms of our experiments is an EMF is induced in the loop when the number of magnetic field lines that pass through the loop is changing. The actual number of field lines passing through the loop does not matter. The value of the induced EMF and induced current are determined by the rate at which that number changes.
In our first experiment, the magnetic field lines spread out from the north pole of the magnet. Thus, as we move the north pole closer to the loop, the number of field lines passing through the loop increases. That increase apparently causes conduction electrons in the loop to move and provide energy for their motion. When the magnet stops moving, the number of field lines through the loop no longer changes and the induced current and induced EMF disappears. In our second experiment, when the switch is open, that is, no current, there are no field lines. However, when we turn on the current in the right hand loop, the increasing current builds up a magnetic field around that loop and at the left hand loop. While the field builds, the number of magnetic field lines through the left hand loop increases. As in the first experiment, the increase in field lines through the loop apparently induces a current and an EMF there. When the current in the right hand loop reaches a final steady value, the number of field lines through the left hand loop no longer changes and the induced current and induced EMF disappears. A quantitative treatment. To put Faraday's law to work, we need a way to calculate the amount of magnetic field that passes through a loop. In a similar situation while discussing electric fields, we needed to calculate the amount of electric field that passes through a surface. There, we defined an electric flux as phi E is equal to integral of E dot dA. Here, we define a magnetic flux. Suppose a loop enclosing an area A is placed in a magnetic field then the magnetic flux through the loop is phi b is equal to integral of b dot dA. Suppose that the loop lies in a plane and that the magnetic field is perpendicular to the plane of the loop. Then we can write the dot product in equation A as b dA cos 0 which is equal to b dA. If the magnetic field is also uniform, then B can be brought out in front of the integral sign. The remaining integral then gives just the area A of the loop. Thus, equation A reduces to phi B is equal to B into A. With this notion of magnetic flux, we can state Faraday's law in a more quantitative and useful way as the magnitude of the EMF induced in a conducting loop is equal to the rate at which the magnetic flux through the loop changes with time. As we will see, the induced EMF tends to oppose the flux change. So Faraday's law is formally written as epsilon is equal to minus d phi b upon dt. Here, the minus sign indicates the opposition. We often neglect the minus sign in equation B, seeking only the magnitude of the induced EMF. If we change the magnetic flux through a coil of n turns, an induced EMF appears in every turn and the total EMF induced in the coil is the sum of these individual induced EMFs. If the coil is tightly wound so that the same flux passes through all the turns, the total EMF induced in the coil is epsilon is equal to minus n into d phi b upon dt. The general means by which we can change the magnetic flux through a coil are change the magnitude b of the magnetic field within the coil. Change either the total area of the coil or the portion of that area that lies within the magnetic field. For example, by expanding the coil or sliding it into or out of the field. Change the angle between the direction of the magnetic field and the plane of the coil. For example, 
by rotating the coil so that the field is perpendicular to the plane of the coil and then is along that plane. Applications of Faraday's Law The ground fold circuit interrupter is an interesting safety device that protects users of electrical appliances against electric shock. Its operation makes use of Faraday's law. In the ground fold circuit interrupter shown, wire 1 leads from the wall outlet to the appliance to be protected and wire 2 leads from the appliance back to the wall's outlet. An iron ring surrounds the two wires and a sensing coil is wrapped around part of the ring. Because the currents in the wires are in opposite direction and of equal magnitude, there is no magnetic field surrounding the wires and the net magnetic flux through the sensing coil is zero. If the return current in wire 2 changes so that the two currents are not equal, however, circular magnetic field lines exist around the pair of wires. That can happen if, for example, the appliance becomes wet, enabling current to leak to ground. Therefore, the net magnetic flux through the sensing coil is no longer zero. Because household current is alternating, meaning that its direction keeps reversing, the magnetic flux through the sensing coil changes with time, inducing an EMF in the coil. This induced EMF is used to trigger a circuit breaker which stops the current before it is able to reach a harmful level. Another interesting application of Faraday's law is the production of sound in an electric guitar. The coil in this case, called the pickup coil, is placed near the vibrating guitar string, which is made of a metal that can be magnetized. A permanent magnet inside the coil magnetizes the portion of the string nearest the coil. When the string vibrates at some frequency, its magnetized segment produces a changing magnetic flux through the coil. The changing flux induces an EMF in the coil that is fed to an amplifier. The output of the amplifier is sent to the loudspeakers, which produces the sound waves we hear. Lenz Law Soon after Faraday proposed his law of induction, Henrich Friedrich Lenz devised a rule for determining the direction of an induced current in a loop, that is, an induced current has a direction such that the magnetic field due to the current opposes the change in the magnetic flux that induces the current. This means that the induced current tends to keep the original magnetic flux through the loop from changing. Furthermore, the direction of an induced EMF is that of the induced current. The key word in Lenz's law is opposition. Let's apply the law to the motion of the north pole towards the conducting loop. Opposition to pole movement. The approach of the magnet's north pole in figure increases the magnetic flux through the loop and thereby induces a current in the loop. The loop then acts as a magnetic dipole with a south pole and a north pole and its magnetic dipole movement is directed from south to north. To oppose the magnetic flux increase being caused by the approaching magnet, the loop's north pole and thus the magnetic dipole movement must face towards the approaching north pole so as to repel it. Then the curled straight right hand rule tells us that the current induced in the loop must be counterclockwise. If we next pull the magnet away from the loop, a current will again be induced in the loop. Now, however, 
the loop will have a south pole facing the retreating north pole of the magnet so as to oppose the retreat. Thus, the induced current will be clockwise. Opposition to flux change With the magnet initially distant, no magnetic flux passes through the loop. As the north pole of the magnet then nears the loop with its magnetic field directed downward, the flux through the loop increases. To oppose this increase in flux, the induced current I must set up its own field directed upward inside the loop. Then the upward flux of field opposes the increasing downward flux of field. The curled straight right hand rule tells us that I must be counterclockwise. So friends, here we come to the end of our discussion in this lecture today and therefore we sum up. Faraday's law of induction states that if the magnetic flux through an area bounded by a closed conducting loop changes with time, a current and an EMF are produced in the loop. This process is called induction. Lenz's law states that an induced current has a direction such that the magnetic field due to the current opposes the change in the magnetic flux that induces the current. The induced EMF has the same direction as the induced current. So that is it for today. See you in the next lecture where we shall be discussing more about magnetostatics. Thank you very much.